Now we're back with part two of our UDFAs, the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, today we're going to tackle Josh Nurse, Tyson Williams, Nigel Warrior, Chauncey Rivers, Christian Welch. Tyson Nurch, I'm sorry, Josh Nurch is a DB for Utah. Tyson Williams is a running back for BYU. Nigel Warrior is a safety for Tennessee. Chauncey Rivers is a defensive end for Mississippi State. And Christian Welch is a linebacker from Iowa. So first off is Nigel Warrior. And the game I looked at was versus Bama. And if you um, missed the first one, you'll kind of go back to the first video. You'll see the criteria I have for these UDFAs. And again, I'm just going to read you my notes from the game versus Bama. Uh, he got a pick versus Bama. Uh, but Ruggs ran him down like he was standing still. He covered the Bama tight ends extremely well when he was in one-on-one -on -one with that. I think it was number 83 or 87. He pretty much locked the dude up, and that's who he was guarding when he got the interception. I didn't see a missed tackle from him. But they kept putting him in man-to-man -man coverage with those speedy wide receivers from Alabama. And they, were, they weren't they were running by him, but he wasn't necessarily covering them either. But um, like I said, I didn't see a missed tackle. He's, he would be more like a strong safety. He'd be more like a strong safety. I didn't see a missed tackle. He did get an interception when he was guarding the tight end. And um, he didn't get burnt by their receivers, but he, he wasn't necessarily covering them too. All right? That's Nigel Warrior. Second on the list is Josh Nurse, DB from uh, Utah. Uh, he transfer, transitioned to defense in 2017, so he's only been playing defense for two seasons. Uh, and the game I watched versus them was, I mean, with them was versus Oregon. Uh, he's 6'3", 201 pounds. He looks like a tall and skinny kid. Him being a 6'3 corner is probably the reason he got picked up, you know, period. 6'3 uh, corners are hard to come by. And uh, with him being a, a raw, raw guy of defense, maybe they can coach him up and, and, and go from there. But it's going to be tough for him to, to, to make the 53 with the, the corners that we got. But, um, and like I said, the game I did for Utah was versus Oregon. Uh, he didn't get a, well, his stats for the year, no interceptions, six pass breakups. Uh, as far as my notes, uh, he needed to get better at locating the ball. There was a, a ball caught on him that was um, basically hit him in the back, and the receiver for Oregon caught it. Uh, he, he looked good in man to man. Looked like he, he had, you know, good footwork. Uh, he was long enough to press guys without them uh, breaking the cushion. He competed for the ball when it was in the air, and he competed in his routes, too, when he was a man-to-man. -man. He looks like Richard Sherman. And I'm not saying he plays like Richard Sherman. He's built up like Richard Sherman. He's 6'3", a uh, skinny kid. He He's a great competitor. He, he's not very technical, but he's a great competitor. It looks like he's willing to learn, and hopefully he can you know learn enough to keep him around. Not necessarily with the Ravens because we deep at corner, but – um. He 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 has he has enough ability. If he learned the techniques, he'll be in the league long simply because he's six three. Tall corners are hard to come by, and he's tall. Next, Tyson Williams. Um, my notes for him with the game I did was versus um, Tennessee versus Tennessee. Little red flags with Tyson. He's been to three colleges. Started off at North Carolina, then went to South Carolina. Ended up at BYU. Uh, he's a good inside zone runner. He's he's okay in pass pro. He knows who to block and he doesn't mind sticking his, his nose in there. He's a tough runner between the tackles. I don't I don't he's not a home run threat. I don't see him running inside zone well, but um BYU ran a lot of inside zone RPO stuff off the inside zone and he was good at at, at that. Um has to have a good old line though. I didn't see him, you know, do a lot of stuff where he was making guys miss. So he'd had to have a good old line with a good enough crease to hit the hit the hole. He wasn't one of those guys that were slow to and fast through the hole. He just saw a hole and was the same speed going through it. All right, next up on my list. So I flip the page here. Christian Welch, linebacker from Iowa. Um, and this game I watched for him was versus Minnesota. He's uh, not a clean blitzer, except for when he comes off the edge. If he blitzes up in the middle, he normally gets knocked off or he doesn't get skinny and, and get through there clean. He he always has something to, well, not always, in this game, he had something to slow him up. Uh, next note is he got caught in the wash a lot. Run plays that were not directly at him, he didn't scrape good enough to get over the top and go make tackles. He always got caught in the wash. 
Uh, I see him miss like three tackles, and he made like eight that game maybe. No, not even eight. But I did see him miss three. I'm not sure the uh, correct number of tackles he had, but I know he, he, he like fell in on some tackles, and they probably gave him tackles like that. Um, and then the last note I got for him, he look, he looked better when blitzing off the edge. He looks uncomfortable in space. He looks uncomfortable in space, and he's a better box linebacker. And the fifth and final guy I have for this episode of uh, Baltimore UDFA's is Chauncey Rivers from Texas A&M. I'm sorry, Chauncey Rivers from Mississippi State. The game I watched was versus che- Texas A&M, and Chauncey started off at Georgia. I want to say he was a four or five star recruit. Got dismissed from the team, went to uh, East Mississippi Community College, was one of the stars of Last Chance U, and he ended up at Mississippi State after leaving East Mississippi Community College for his last two, if not three years. Uh, so my notes for him versus Texas A&M, he looked explosive off the edge. He had multiple pass rush moves. Uh, the tight ends for Texas A&M did not block him. Uh, he runs up field some, so that means he's susceptible to counters and being trapped up underneath. Uh, he does a good job of playing with playing with leverage. So if he was if he was in a five tech and was trying to get the B gap, he did a good job of crossing face and blowing up the B gap and playing with leverage to do that. He, he needs to do a better job of setting the edge, and he has active hands, not violent, but active hands. That means he does a good job of hand fighting and not necessarily getting those stronger handed guys off of him. But he doesn't just sit there and let them hold him up, hold him like that. He, he tries all his different moves to try to get rid of guys when, when that happens. Now, with that being said, that's part two of um, UDFAs. Still, we got 10 more to go. And so we'll get those out, you know, slowly, hopefully tomorrow and the next day. This is Coach Evans with Sip the Tally Films. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share. I'll see you when I see you. Peace.